This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. If you'd like a free guide that explains the hidden link between relaxation and the Law of Attraction, or if you want more information about my books or my coaching, you can visit RadicalCounselor.com. Enjoy the episode. So I thought that we would talk about a different angle of the subject we discussed last episode, which is that you already have what you want. Last episode, we did kind of a deep dive, deep spiritual take on already possessing what you want, literally already having it. And when we get really present, when we recognize this moment for what it is, which is seemingly timeless and naturally abundant, when we recognize this, we have what we want, quite literally. And I discuss this all the time in this podcast. If it, it, what I'm talking about is not clear, just listen to some of the earlier episodes and I think it will become clearer for you. There's an inherent abundance now that's always here. And then last episode I said, you know, if you want to, you can then make that your base and build upon it using various LOA techniques. And there's all these different techniques we can use to kind of bring out that abundance more explicitly into our life externally, right? And so today I thought I would talk about, you know, basically Neville's approach doing that, just because I know people love to hear about Neville's approach and he's written so many good things, said so many good things about this. So what I'm going to talk about today, I've discussed in Relax More, Try Less and uh, Manifestation Through Relaxation. And so many other people have discussed this point as well. Okay. So this is not like new material, earth shattering material you're going to hear. But given what we talked about last episode and just what we talk about in general from this podcast, I feel like it's relevant to hear this passage that I'm going to quote from today, which is from Five Lessons. And just to, you know, think about it freshly, you know, Neville stuff, the really practical advice that he gives. And again, there's so much practical advice in five lessons. This really practical information, it's good to hear it from a fresh perspective over and over again, in my opinion. I want to read this passage and kind of put it up next to what we were just talking about in terms of inherent abundance and the inherent nowness of the moment, where there is no time. We hear that often. There is no time in reality. Time is a man-made concept, right? And what is real is now. And this realness, this nowness, is inherently good. So how then can you build upon this easily, using a device like Neville's or techniques like Neville's? If we've recognized this nowness, which we can do very easily, recognize this nowness as we always go over through stillness, through movement, through speaking out loud. Once we've recognized this inherent nowness, inherent abundance of this very moment, you can utilize something like what Neville writes here, which is this. In this feeling, it is easy to touch anything in this world. You take this simple little restricted action which implies fulfillment of your prayer and you feel it or you enact it. Whatever it is, you enter into the action as though you were an actor in the part. You do not sit back and visualize yourself doing it. You do it. With the body immobilized, you imagine that the greater you inside the physical body is coming out of it and that you are actually performing the proposed action. If you are going to walk, you imagine that you are walking. You do not see yourself walk, feel that you are walking. If you are going to climb stairs, feel that you are climbing the stairs. Do not visualize yourself doing it, feel yourself doing it. If you are going to shake a man's hand, do not visualize yourself shaking his hand. Imagine your friend is standing before you and shake his hand. But leave your physical hands immobilized and imagine that your greater hand, which is your imaginary hand, is actually shaking his hand. All you need do is to imagine that you are doing it. You are stretched out in time. 
and what you are doing, which seems to be a controlled daydream, is an actual act in the greater dimension of your being. You are actually encountering an event fourth dimensionally before you encounter it here in the three dimensions of space, and you do not have to raise a finger to bring that state to pass. So most of you have heard that before. And at the same time, going over what we just did last episode, talking about this inherent abundance of this moment, if you tap into that, I think it becomes easier to follow this recommendation that Neville just gave. Again, he says, all you need do is imagine that you are doing it. You are stretched out in time. What that means to draw parallels from last episode, what that can mean, is that when you imagine this fulfilled act, the sense of fulfillment, and actually feel the fulfillment fill you up, when you actually do it the way that Neville suggests doing it, and we all know who are listening to this podcast about these suggestions, when you actually do it, it's done. And not only is it done, you already have it. You already have it. That's the parallel from last episode. So not only do you literally already have what you inherently want on this deeply spiritual level, but on the level of externally receiving something you want. If you imagine and have a fulfilled sense of it already having happened, you also already have it, according to Neville. And you can look at this like you already have it, so you're actually remembering a previous event. This is not something that's going to happen in the future. It's something that already has happened. You already have it. You already have that job, which you had desired. You already have that partner, which you previously desired. It's done. You're remembering a past event. Because you're stretched out in time. So past, future, whatever, doesn't really matter here. When we're present like this, we can then play with our imagination and our time sense, as Neville likes to call it, gets real wacky. So a seemingly future event is not a future event. We can make a seemingly future event become a past event and then look at it from a place of remembrance or of it already having happened. And, you know, we can talk about quantum physics and all this stuff about that, but I usually don't because I don't understand it that well. And when I hear law of attraction, people talk about it. I feel like they sound silly a lot of the time because they don't really understand it either. I do know, and I know Neville knew, that there's something about our sense of time that can be thrown. And when you throw your time sense in this way, a quote-unquote future desire can be made something that's already happened and you're looking back on. That's why Neville's, you know, that other technique I remember when, very similar. And it's also worth noting that a paragraph or two later, Neville says, all these techniques you can use and change them to fit your temperament. But I must emphasize the necessity of inducing the drowsy state where you can become attentive without effort. Well, when you become aware of the present nowness, the present abundance of right now, I would say that you are attentive without effort. Is it drowsy, per se? Maybe, maybe not. I would say it almost is drowsy because you're attentive without effort. But you are inducing that state just by becoming really present now, like we went over last episode. And then Neville says, all these techniques you can then change and modify to fit your temperament best. And that's why recently I was talking so much about Maxwell Maltz and Psycho-Cybernetics, because a lot of the techniques that Maltz recommends in that book, visualization techniques, fit very well with what Neville's talking about. They might not seem to fit that well when you first get into this material, but if you practice and experiment with this stuff, you will see they fit alongside each other very, very well. It's about that feeling of having it. 
And, you know, Maltz talks about shadow boxing or practicing that sense, that feeling. And it seems like you're practicing it and trying to, you know, grasp that feeling. And then all of a sudden you have it. But there's also, undeniably, in my opinion, this whole aspect of timelessness, which is saying that there's no real past or future when we get present. And so if you want something in the future, you can just as easily, if you get present, recognize that you had it in the past because it's all now, right now. So this is experiential, experimental application of these principles. And again, you've probably heard advice like this a hundred times before. And I'm hoping that this angle that we talked about today will just further be of use to you and that we can always come back to the base, which is right now. And once we get present, there's a lot of different ways of experimenting and playing with this present moment.